GM KTX M7 was a very nice improvement over the previous generation Mini, and now we're checking out the Pro model. Just like the M7, the M7 Pro uses an unusual AMD processor we haven't looked at before. And if there's anything I like more than testing a new Mini PC, it's testing a new Mini PC with a new CPU. The Pro model retains all the same features of the M7 and only increases the price slightly for a higher tier CPU. Sounds good to me. How does it compare to the M7? We'll deep dive into it right after this message. Is it time to upgrade your storage drive or PC? Worried about migrating your OS over? Fear not. Ezos Disk Copy is a super easy to use cloning app that will help you get up and running quickly. Choose a source drive, target, and clone. Easy. Find it linked in the video description. There have been a bunch of improvements with the look and design of the M7 over the previous M6. The metal case returns and the translucent lid looks very sexy. The M7 also has one of the most satisfying power buttons to press in recent memory. And yes, you're right. Apart from reviewing mini PCs, I have no life. This mini's got a unique, distinct look in a crowded market, and I like it, I like it a lot. And I should point out there's no change to the design of the M7 Pro over the M7. So the biggest change is the CPU. In the M7, it was AMD's Ryzen 6850H Pro, and in the M7 Pro, it's the 6950H Pro. Double the Pro, double the power? Not really. It's still the same 8-core 16-thread CPU with Radeon 680M graphics, just with higher clock speeds. Jim Katex M7 Pro is only available as a bare bones on the official website, starting at US dollars So, an extra $20 over the M7. As of this review, the 1TB SSD, 32GB RAM model is available for $460 on the official website, or you can get it at Amazon. The balls to the wall 2TB SSD, 64GB RAM model is only available on the website. Accessories include a VESA mount, HDMI cord, and power supply. Jim Tech has pitched the M7 Pro as a value option for gamers. It includes an Oculink port for a much better eGPU experience than through the USB 4 port. There's also a couple of USB 3, 10 gigabit, and an audio jack. Intel's Wi-Fi 6 AX200 takes care of wireless networking. The back has a couple of USB 2, HDMI 2.1, which apparently can go up to 8K 60Hz, DisplayPort 2.0, dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and another USB 4 port. Both USB 4 were tested with a USB-C monitor, and both worked fine with power delivery and display. In total, the Mini can handle four displays natively. Like its younger brother, the M7 Pro opens with a twist, which is something a little different. Still has screws underneath though. Dual channel DDR5-4800 is the maximum soda memory speed this CPU supports, and you have dual M.2 Gen 4 slots for storage. The included OS drive is only Gen 3 and comes with a heatsink. Underneath the SSD is the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Everything here is cooled by the top fan. Windows 11 Pro is included with the pre-build options, and this Mini is malware-free. Ubuntu worked fine on the M7, so unsurprisingly, it works fine with the Pro as well. The benchmarks will give us a good indication of the difference between the M7 and M7 Pro. Since the price is really close between the two, any reasonable gains will make the 20 or so dollars price increase worth it. Okay, there's a tiny improvement in Cinebench single core between the two. Not worth mentioning, even though I just mentioned it. There's a bigger improvement in multi-core. If we take the best results using the performance profile on the BIOS, the M7 Pro is almost 4% ahead. In Geekbench, they're both tied in single core. And the multi-core benchmark also shows around a 4% increase for the Pro. Video encoding has the M7 Pro doing M7 performance mode numbers at default, which is nice, and a slightly bigger margin than previous tests when comparing the best results. In AV1, it did even better. So we're looking at single-digit CPU gains on the multi-core side, around 5% overall. Now for the integrated graphics. 3D Mark has an 8% win for the Pro in DX11, almost 7% in DX12 Time Spy, and again, 8% in Steel Nomad. So we're looking at around 5% multi-core CPU and 8% GPU gains for $20 extra. I'd hit that. 
Unfortunately, I didn't record the on-screen display average and 1% lows during the M7 game benchmarks, and since I'm short on time, we'll make do with the previous captures. I will say the benchmarks were pretty accurate, and you'll see up to 8% gains with the M7 Pro, depending on the game. Planted. Shadows traveling. So I go. For when you need some serious graphics horsepower, an Oculink dock will do the best job. I'm using the Ocu P4 V2 I bought from AliExpress, paired with an RTX 3080. I've linked the dock in the video description. Another eGPU option is to use USB 4. Like the M7, the Pro spat out errors in Windows on both ports with my Razer Core X eGPU until I remove the maximum power savings setting for PCI Express Link State Power Management. Latency Mon checks how well the Mini holds up for audio production. I'm running it with Cinebench loading all cores in the background, and the result is fine. The M7 Pro also handles a 4K video project pretty well in Adobe Premiere. However, those using a Mini primarily for video editing will be better off with an Intel CPU Mini instead. Mashing the delete key on startup will let you enter the BIOS. In the main section, you can select your power mode. In advanced, you'll find wake on LAN and auto power on right at the top. Hardware monitor allows you to mess with the CPU fan curve. The integrated graphics is set to three gigabytes by default. I recommend setting it to four if you plan to play the latest AAA games. In AMD CBS SMU common options, you can manually set the power limit if you prefer that over the main profiles. The 1TB Zeta Stone SSD inside the M7 Pro does a little better than the 512GB found in the M7 and even matched a Gen 4 result in 3 Mark's very long storage benchmark. The SSD's max temperature was unchanged compared to the M7. Unfortunately, Bluetooth range is short on this Mini. It wasn't great on the M7, but this one is worse. Wi-Fi range also suffered. Normally I play a game of Valorant and see if any network connection issues pop up at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. But this M7 Pro couldn't even connect to the network at that distance. I had to use the 2.4G band to use the internet wirelessly. Idle power draw is again the same as the M7 and the maximum is practically the same as well. Maximum CPU temp was pretty much identical. So what about fan noise? Surprise! Nah, it's just the same. Which is pretty good in default mode and starting to get noisy using the performance profile, depending on your tolerance.
GM KTX M7s are taller minis which add to the overall volume it takes up and it's just under a litre. So conclusion time, GM KTX M7 Pro is a nice looking value option with a top tier mobile CPU from a couple years ago. It's one of the lowest priced minis to include an Oculink port. Fan noise is down over the M6. And it's nice to see a 2TB SSD option, which is rare. However, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth range is short. Only a Gen 3 storage drive is included, and the performance mode doesn't add a lot of performance for the extra fan noise. Having now used both of them, I'd go with a Pro for the extra dollars. The performance gain for around 20 bucks is worth it. I'd run the M7 Pro in its default power mode and be happy. Either Mini though is a good option. What we also saw in this review is that wireless range can be different between two identical Mini designs. While I always suspected that to be the case, this is the first time I've managed to confirm that it can vary between units, so thanks to GMK Tech for letting me review both. If you're interested in the M7 Pro, you'll find the links in the video description. Anything purchased there helps keep this channel afloat. Another cool GMK Tech Mini PC we looked at a few months ago was the G5, the smallest Mini reviewed this year, and it also has a very low price tag. You can check out that review right here. Cheers!